Back to our regular scheduled music. Artist Journal, December 26, 2022, Berlin. My name is Adrian Pogabelli. Freaking out my neighbors on a daily occurrence here, or I guess four days a week. And, and a reminder, I'll put out the tweet probably tomorrow. Uh, there is going to be another Spaces. It's going to be with Rug Radio. Again, don't tweet that out yet. Let's put out the show first, but FYI. So it should be fun. Just under their banner. It's just syndication. It's nothing more than that. But it's pretty cool because they, they are, you know, a thing in the space, in the decentralized media space and uh, on Ethereum. So this is cool. I mean, at least they're kind of based, but they're happy to have a Tezos show. So that's super cool. And as I always say here, we're multi-chain, multimedia. And uh, sort of the way I see it is Tezos is kind of the launching point, the foundation from which we kind of vault from, just like digital art is the foundation from which we vault from. And we talk about everything out here. Why limit ourselves? And, you know, that's why I hope I'll never, ever get tired of doing this because the great thing about speech is it can go anywhere really quickly. So with that, we have Mr. Shapeless. I have a little bit of AI here. I mean, Really, I open with what catches my eye, which seems like the most pressing, urgent image of the last, you know, 24, 48 hours. I guess it's been 72. So anyways, Mr. Shapeless's genesis on Super Rare, it's actually kind of a funny story. He was tweeting it out. I think I have the tweets here. Uh, It did well in the end. Really nice work. And we'll come back to the work in a second, but it is kind of funny. So he accidentally put it for an hour uh, his uh, his auction on Super Rare. It did well anyway. Can't imagine a dumbest move for Genesis. Sorry, everyone. So finally gets on Super Rare. But in the end, and, and actually, then he ends up the next day putting accidentally fat fingering a bid. Uh, he, I think he meant to put 0.055. <laughs> and he put 0.55. Mr. Shapeless is hilarious. I think it's like, In a weird way, I'd say a great PR because like here I'm talking about it. I I thought it was hilarious. Like, uh, you know, and uh, so maybe it works out in the end and in the end. And we will look at the work. I mean, two ETH. So twenty four hundred dollars. Pretty cool. Now, just looking at the work and we have a few from Mr. Shapeless here. There's a few things like, you know, Casper David Friedrich. I mean, it kind of is reminiscent of that probably most famous of romantic paintings by the German romantic painter David David Casper Friedrich. Let's just quickly... Casper David Friedrich. There we go. It's probably here. And then I think Del, Del Wanderer. Del Wanderer. Uh, so here it is. Still working on my pronunciation after six years here in Germany. Der Wanderer über dem Nebelmeer over the foggy sea. And so anyways, kind of has a bit of a wanderer feel to it, doesn't it? And yeah, I mean, so just interesting. Again, what's so interesting about this to me is I'm just utterly convinced that if AI hadn't made this, nobody would have made this. And these interesting shapes in the sky, the diversity, the weird stars, uh, the clouds. And so there's a lot to look through here. The man in the suit, again, slightly kind of... uh, reminiscent of the 1940s and 50s pulps again even in its kind of matted quality you know like it does have a bit of that science fiction galaxy science fiction and fantasy feel to it a touch you know Uh, we have some more here uh i guess he won that auction it's pretty hilarious uh continuing on (laughs) uh here's another so we have a few Okay, and again, there's a bit of a Kandinsky feeling to this as well, and you're going to see more of it. And kind of a, let's just see what this looks like bigger. Uh, Like, it's holding up pretty well. It's very interesting to look at this uh, at AI works up close, because sometimes they do break down. Like, or at least the aesthetic starts to change 
when you go from kind of when you go up close. It's one of the limitations one could argue, but with each version that seems to get better. I love the clouds. Again, I think Dali would love these clouds, these kind of weirdly suggestive clouds. And again, it it tempts me. I you know, again, multimedia, the temptation for me, remember we were talking about the Jeff Koons uh, painting that I saw here out at Contemporary Fine Arts in, Bel in Berlin, massive painting, and it would have just been an interesting kind of painting, but what struck me is it had this big rose in the middle, and it was kind of JPEGed out. It was an oil painting, but it was represented it was like as if a JPEG had been oil painted. And that's also reminiscent of Kuhn's other work. Just to kind of bring home the point here. You never know where things are going to go. That uh, Jeff Kuhn's Mona Lisa. Right. So this whole series, some of you are probably familiar with it. It's actually super interesting here. Let's take a look. So what is going on here? Now, maybe we have an installation view just so you have a clue. Right, there's Jeff Koons, and he's got these, I find the blue ball thing annoying, because um, I don't think it actually needs it. I think it actually maybe takes away in my universe. But he had this series, can't remember what it was called. Yeah, the Gazing Ball. And I'm going somewhere with this, and somewhere big, which is going to attach to our JPEG Rose thing. Uh, Jeff Koons' Gazing Ball series. So he had several, like he had you know, uh, Manet's Station A sold out, a lot of like, you know, canonical works. And what was so cool about this series, in my opinion, is the cracks in the oil paint from the Mona Lisa, from the original Mona Lisa, were painted. So again, to me, this is a, another example of traveling through the mediums and we might see the JPEGed out rose. I'll have to try and dig that up at some point. And then painting that JPEG distortion as again, this kind of traveling through the mediums idea. And so when I see, to bring it all back home, when I see, actually we have more, when I see these clouds, I get tempted to think, you know, these should be just kind of oil painted, for example. Just like, say, Coons is oil painting the cracks, or his team, probably, probably to be more accurate, are oil painting the cracks of the Mona Lisa, uh, with its own, co to me, that's enough commentary. We don't need the ball in the front, which to me is kind of a distraction and kind of obnoxious a little bit in my universe. This is it's kind of the reason why people get annoyed with Coons, but maybe he understood that that's what was necessary in today's day and age to really get people's attention. You need a bit of an obnoxious factor, potentially. Maybe that's what was going through his mind. Maybe he just loved it. Uh, maybe it was just irrational enough, right? I mean, quick very quickly, and then we're going to get through these half a billion tabs this time. Uh, Jeff Koons is actually a really interesting guy if you look at the interviews, because uh, most people don't like him, but the closer you look, I didn't like him until I actually watched his interviews. And he has a great story when he was 19, he went to New York City and he looked up Salvador Dali in the phone book. And Dali was in the phone book and he asked if he could visit and he Dali said yes, this 19 year old kid. And Kunz's point there was uh, the generosity of Dali to really bring him in and talk to him and have that you know hour of his time or whatever. So just kind of an interesting story on kind of the other side, because a lot of people think you got to be a terrible person to be a good artist, and this is a total myth in my view. Uh, in fact. You know, you could argue it's the opposite, that the really greats maybe, but who knows? I mean, that's a, who knows? That's a whole other debate. Moral of the story, my big roundabout way of saying this stuff just looks like it's crying out to be oil painted, these clouds, you know, and then you start putting, like, forget everything else that's here that's super cool, this crooked cloud here. I mean, you would never do that. It's interesting, this rational machine, how irrational it can act. We can't act that irrational almost to put a you know, crooked cloud like this. But the AI can. Isn't that strange? But 
continuing on, this stuff is crying out to be uh, oil painted and you could even remove the rest of it. And you imagine this, you know, where you'd get rid of, you just put the clouds and, and the, this landscape here and maybe a little bit of a city. You don't even need to be that detailed. And you make that an oil painting here and you'd, you'd have an original, like it's not easy to make original oil paintings and it'd be totally contemporary because it would be using AI. So again, this is kind of what I thought was going on with Glenn Brown, but I don't think in the end, it sounds like he wasn't being influenced by Google's deep dream, but that's kind of where I think it. And to me, again, bringing it all back home, it's back to that Jeff Koons painting, the JPEGization of that rose in oil paint. And that's kind of where I'm going with this. It kind of becomes a totally contemporary painting, right? A painting that couldn't have even been made potentially one year ago. Okay, so anyways, I think we've drilled drilled that point home. Let's just look at a few more here. Uh, just some more just stunning works, almost like a bowling alley type thing here, or even a De Chirico, or you look at the shadow and you start to see Dali. You start to get psychological elements here. Who knows on, and then, you know, who knows if this is on purpose or not, uh, you know, it doesn't matter in a lot of ways. Uh, and also just these interesting colors here. So ironically, uh, the, as we sort of look at this, maybe one of the most interesting things about AI is how it can take such irrational for us decisions, such as these weird stripes uh, on the ground here. Uh, it's quite irrational or crooked clouds. Weirdly, AI is kind of has an irrational feel to it, at least in our interpretation, when we look at that, I say a crooked cloud, I would never make that. And I'd suggest very few of you would do it either, uh, especially if the rest of your clouds were normal. So anyways, and we see that irrationality uh, in the color stripes here. So interesting, right? And just like, again, the variety of the shapes, uh, you'd have to be a genius, a creative genius to put all this stuff together but we can do it with AI with the right prompts here. And aesthetically, we have some wonderful stuff going on here too. Yeah, Mr. Shapeless, uh, another AI artist who is really coming into his own here. Uh, I think the timing getting on Super Rare is perfect. Like he kind of matured right at that right point here. And again, kind of has a bit of a Kandinsky feel to it. The clouds again, uh, I, they don't need to look natural. Like again, we have kind of, a contemporary version of a landscape here of clouds. And I'm saying you could almost get rid of all this other stuff if you did it in oil paint. You could get rid of the one, our Wanderer here, and you could just do this uh, as a landscape. Maybe I should, uh, but let's see if I could ever get clouds like that. So I'm kind of going back. I'm tempted to get back into AI. I da dabbled with it for a day, but looking at these clouds and the originality, and then you apply a traveling through the mediums principle to it, uh, the transformation. And, you know, again, are these people in the contemporary art world, what are they going to do when you start showing up with clouds like this? Are they going to say this is to be dismissed? Uh, I don't think so. It, I mean, it depends on your execution at the end of the day, I'd, I'd argue. Everything kind of comes back down to execution. Here's some more just interesting experiments here. Penthouse. So almost playing with a you know building skyscraper type thing, condo. Almost playing with this indoor-outdoors theme that we've seen quite a bit in AI. And it's kind of like the shapes are drifting off into the atmosphere here. And these interesting shapes. Again, you see this kind of line here, which looks like an antenna coming up from the building. But the cloud stops there. The gradient stops and then it turns into a different cloud. Very irrational. Right? So interesting. Another kind of wanderer work with this figure here from behind uh, and some interesting clouds, again, playing with landscape. We saw a lot of this in, I think his name was Javier Tomas, right? So anyways, interesting. And this is also just aesthetically, I would see, say quite successful, quite interesting, very paintable. I mean, it would probably take you a couple of weeks, but this is a very paintable painting. I mean, this is like, and there's nothing wrong with using a projector. I went to the, for two weeks, Twice, I went to the Academy of Realist Art in Toronto to learn how to oil paint, and that's basically all the time you need, in my opinion. 
uh, to learn how to oil paint. You don't need to take four years. You need about two two week sessions and you'll learn it the first time how to do it. And the second time you'll internalize it and, you, and you'll know the principles. Uh, this could probably be painted in a couple of weeks pretty easily. I would actually argue, depending on how much detail you want to put in, very tempting. And But maybe it's not necessary, right? These are the sorts of debates I have in my mind, right? Is like, does it need to be oil painted though? Like there is a, you know, what I always call the alchemical transformation when you go from one medium to another and what if, and scale another alchemical transformation. So you make it huge. We were talking about that from the very beginning with strange things, thug, thug Lord work. If that was like a huge oil painting, I mean, it would you would just have to uh, respect it. Like, it, you know, as uh, David Hickey, the, the art historian said, uh, undeniable is undenied. And that's kind of what Thug Lord was. It's sort of like it was just kind of an undeniable work. And you put that in oil, but I don't know if you need to. Maybe that actually takes away because it's like, are you adding stuff that doesn't need to be there? in a weird sort of way. So that's kind of like the weird debate I might have in my head. But I see these clouds and I'm just kind of dying to make this oil painting. Just the clouds. And I don't even want to put all this other work into it. Just the clouds do a simple field, you know. And to me, that says enough in a certain sort of way. So anyways, more beautiful work. Night falls at the city. Uh, speaking of AI... Charles AI weighs in, galleries need to find curators specialized in detecting and appraising AI, AI art for the very near future. I, I don't disagree at all. Like, I mean, we could bury our heads in the sand and say there's nothing going on of importance with AI, but I just don't think, like, we have scrutinized it from every angle I can think of, and as well as the comments that have come in. And look at this. I mean, we're starting with AI you know, three months later. So isn't that interesting? And more, like it's getting more convincing, frankly, by the day. And you're seeing these artists that have been experimenting, they're getting better every day. And the productivity, as Charles AI has pointed out at an earlier point, the productivity, they're making 100 images while, you know, you work on your oil painting. Or in the time that we'd make that oil painting, two weeks, you could probably make 2,000 literally AI images, okay? And you know, 200 that are like persuasive. So again, I mean, it's fun to think about seeing this as an oil painting. I mean, it would be stunning. Um, but again, maybe it's not necessary. You got to love the resolution. This is uh, Alessio La Greca, uh, Natura Morta, still life. Like you got to love, he, he's very good at the detail. Uh, one of the best. So anyways, nice work. Here's another one. That was on foundation. This is on object. And again, he seems to get like super high resolution somehow. And that could just be in the prompt. Okay. That could just be like uh, 4K, you know, in 4K or whatever. So anyway, the more I see this, the more it's just like, you know, you get pulled in 50 different directions as a digital artist these days. You got to pick your battles, but man... It's getting pretty interesting. Might have to load up Midjourney again and all the others. See what's new in the new versions. Anyways, uh, Zoom, sit and explore. So another AI work. And when was this from? December 17th. So about a week ago. I don't think we covered it. But this crooked monitor. Again, like th this is maybe the takeaway from today's episode is the irrational aspects of AI. Like how paradoxical is that, that the machine is acting more irrational than we would. Uh, at least that's our interpretation is that it's irrational, even though it probably is implementing rational processes to get there. But there are so many that the result, you get stuff like crooked monitors, kind of irrational results. Cozy Christmas. I thought this was beautiful. I thought the color was outstanding. Merry Christmas. So we got a few Christmas works here. I thought this was another one by Zoom, and I love this, these people at computers, uh, you know, this modern day studio series, uh, to me, it has legs, as they say in the news business, very nice Christmas tree here too. Uh, this would make a beautiful Christmas card, wouldn't it? So again, Hallmark, you know, we talk about corporations, uh, you wonder how much they're thinking about this, because who knows how much they pay these illustrators when you could pay Zoom. 
uh, and have like a whole series of very modern day Christmas cards. You know, people, this would make a brilliant Christmas card. Buy for one Tezos, 223, maybe get it before she burns any. And we also looked at Marina Amadova just recently. So another new work, kind of with a Christmas vibe to it. Let's see the split and often does twins fashion gives us opportunity to divide ourselves into many sub personalities by trying different clothes and looks co-created with AI. So, you know, uh, kind of profound ideas going on here. And to me, this is more examples, you know, playing with fashion and, and identity. These are the concerns of quote unquote, you know, real artists. These aren't just like, you know, people on Twitter fooling around. You know, they have deep themes going on here. Another irrational, I guess this, like, just see how huge this uh, retina is. The pupils are pretty big too, but you see the retina, it almost goes to the end here. Now, we don't know if that's purely AI, but it almost looks like one of these balls here that are in the air. And again, these, because it was co-created with AI. So we get the sense that Marina is editing these things. But anyways, impressive work. Current bid, 0.1. They're selling too, uh, as we saw with Mr. Shapeless. Here's another interesting work by someone I just saw on Twitter, Maneki Nico AI. I think we've looked at them before. So here's just like a super detailed Christmas work, and I expanded it. Now, you do see the distortions start to get slightly, you know, I mean, the work is gorgeous as a smaller piece, but I think there's limitations to the zoom on this. I think it starts to break down a tiny bit aesthetically. As you zoom in, you start to get, you know, not as pleasing AI distortions, but from here, I mean, the composition, again, I'm kind of back to this idea, like if you were some hyper ambitious oil painter, could you imagine making this an oil painting? Because when you go in, you could get rid of all, you, you can make all this kind of beautiful basically and use this as your inspiration for a tree and do whatever you want, right? And make, kind of fix the errors. So, you know, if you want to put out like a pretty simple prediction, I think we're going to start to see more and more AI in contemporary art because it's just too obvious and it's too much. But what's weird is, is how little I've seen so far. If you've seen some, you know, write a comment. Don't put a link because it'll disappear, and I won't be able to read your comment because YouTube will will hide it. But put a put a comment if you know of any contemporary artists that are using AI in their say oil painting work. I'd be fascinated because I don't see many. Uh, Shilly Preston, I thought this was a, quite a successful AI work too. No Christmas bonus this year. Almost like the. Kind of like this encapsulates like the markets right now. No Santa Claus rally. And it's kind of like this is the image. It just kind of encapsulates it. You know, at least no Santa Claus rally yet. I mean, technically the Santa Claus rally, as they say, is the last five days of the year and the trading days and the first two trading days of the following of the new year. So anyways, I thought a quite a successful work here from Shelley Preston. Pretty cheap, 50 cents not even like 40 cents in US dollars. Uh, Sophie Leaf, so this was interesting because of the lack of distortion. It gets a little fuzzy when you zoom in, but this one I assume is AI, Strange Thing picked it up. It looks like AI, but you know, I'm assuming with new versions of Midjourney. Um, so anyways, interesting work from Sophie Loaf, who I don't know if we've seen before. She's on object, let's take a quick look. And AI artists trying to find her style. Well, isn't that interesting? Like in this business, you know, people are, as I've said before, people are very forgiving of previous work. And I think it looks great. Uh, but imagine, but once you find that thing, just like Mr. Shapeless, literally it can happen in like a week or two. Like if all of a sudden, because then you have your thing, you can probably rep make like 30 of them a day you release two a day and all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, okay, we have a thing here. So I would, yeah, so very interesting, you know, because uh, she'll probably have to update that pretty soon <laughs> when she finds it. Maybe she's already found it. I'm not sure. Uh, Rat Cloaksy is on the homepage. So that's super cool. 
So just a heads up on that. So congrats to Rat Cloaksy here with all his classics. And we hope he's doing well. We haven't heard from him too much. I mean, he's in Ukraine right now. And so best wishes to Rat Cloaksy. And I haven't seen anything recently. I mean, they're having power issues out there and even mentioned it at one point. So anyways, uh, he'd probably be liking to make more work right now, but he probably can't. Uh, so... Yeah, also we have the gloom tube here and actually pressed. And so anyway, it's just kind of interesting stuff on the homepage. Congrats to Rat Cloaksy. And thank you uh, to the anonymous collector who sent me these gloom tubes. That was super cool. And also to Ellie Lowe Sabato for sending recent work as for their holiday drops. It was great. I got a ton of like, uh, maybe not a ton, but I got a few holiday drops here. And uh, we're going to look at this one closer. Lorna Mills, I mean, just sending it out to collectors and stuff. Although, big thanks to the anonymous collector, because I think they just sent that. It wasn't an artist sending their work. It was just someone who actually bought these and sent them to me or had extra. I don't know. So anyway, shout out to everyone who's sharing on the Christmas season here. Uh, Gloom Tube, speaking of, uh, put out an awesome work, very low edition of 10. I lucked out and got it on the auction yesterday. Kind of felt bad for Rorich, who I think was the first guy to... It was very quiet uh, yesterday, and I got home, and the timing was good. I was just about to go for supper at Max und Moritz. If you've ever been to Berlin, it's like a classic 19th century style, or maybe even 1920s style Berlin restaurant. It was the perfect place for Christmas Day dinner at the Duck, which is not usually what I'd order, but it, they had extra anyways. And they ran out of schnitzel. TMI. Too much information. Uh, okay, so here's shoveling snow on Christmas Eve. I look at this. I've never and like the signature, which looks like it's in uh, someone urinated there on the snow. His signature, so that's pretty hilarious. I missed that. Anyway, really nice uh, and probably captures North America these days. The mayhem that is the North American weather. So maybe that's why you put it out. Christmas Eve at the dumpster, and I guess there's the dumpster. And whatever that is. So anyways, really cool work. Already selling. For, there was an offer for 40 this morning, I guess. So you can still get it. Rorich has an offer there. Yeah, there's an offer for 40 I'm not sure if that was taken. But anyway, yeah, that's so... GloomTube is getting stronger and stronger, I find, his market. Like, if you look at the recent stuff... I don't want to take too long on this episode, but you see this Nostalgia Dealer... Now it's down to 55. It was even at like 110 before. This edition of 3, 895. This edition of 20 for 109. You know, these are just prices that people put. So take it with a grain of salt. But that is kind of how much right now, if you want to just buy it off secondary without wheeling and dealing, that's what you'd have to pay. So pretty interesting how well he's doing, which is great. I think it's great because he's just one of those classic, classic, you know, Tezos internet artists. Uh, another awesome work here by Die With The Most Likes. Someone, I was like, oh, I bet Die With The Most Likes had some good Christmas stuff that I should have put in the episode. Forgot about that. I'll tell you my favorite part of this. So it's like playing with the baby in a manger, Jesus in a manger, and I guess Judge Judy is Mary. And Joseph, I don't know who this is, this kind of like Marilyn Manson type figure. I don't know who this is, though, uh, who seems to be wedding himself. This was my favorite part, though. I thought this was brilliant. This looks like some sort of NFL logo, maybe the Falcons or something. I don't know. And I could be wrong about what it is, but how that's like the star that they're following is like what looks like a sports logo here. Brilliant and mattress firm. Uh, so just taking no prisoners here, uh, as usual, good meat. The whole, this whole tweet here was just a masterpiece from Die With The Most Likes. He has a show actually in Berlin, which I'm going to go to. Uh, so FYI, anybody that's in Berlin that might be watching this, he has a show on Friedrichstrasse. Just uh, message me. I have the uh, address. Uh, Ezra Eslin, working on a Christmas work here as well. Merry Christmas, and it looks like the usual mayhem. Kind of a window into her process, hey? She does the outlines, and I guess she does the landscape first, or here it's an urban setting, and then places everything on top with outlines and then finishes the job. So interesting. 
Working hard and yes, Merry Xmas fam. And this came out on the 22nd, which was an interesting work. It's like a vending machine on fire with, you know, knives and guns and whatever else in here. So, you know, classic blood edition of 20 selling for 27. She's also doing really well. Uh, so that's cool. Here is an interesting work by someone, Booboy BKK, who I don't know if I've seen before, but interesting illustrative style, slightly retro, a lot going on with this car, you know, the gradients in here. Again, kind of has like an older feel to it, but pretty impressive work. And so anyway, just a heads up, maybe there's info here, Open C. So uh, illustrator in Bangkok, boo boy. So anyways, make sure I'm following them. So continuing on, Lewis Osborne with a beautiful work here. Two people who are connecting through computers here. Let me just, long distance is the title. So very cool work here. Uh, so modern with these IMAX and everything. Looks like two designers really. And the love is going through the screen. You can see it with the hearts here. I thought a brilliant work and also just the draftsmanship is quite interesting and beautiful. See this line and then how he joins them. This is very kind of poetic here. Like he's joining them uh, in a line and even here and just all of it. Like this is really nicely drafted here. So, and even just doing the window, a lighter kind of brown, even just the paper. Uh, to me, I just see Lewis Osborne continue to evolve here. And it would be easy to just see this as another work, but to me, it's just getting more, I don't want to say convincing, uh, but just better and better, uh, you know, as it often goes. Uh, Junkadelic and Limbo collaborating. So let's just see if we got some music here. Just play a bit. Yeah. Uh. So pretty cool. Uh. Wait for the drop here. Uh. So typical limbo. So cool beat, cool drop. You can find that on object, Junkadelic and Limbo. So just kind of back to this, you know, rebirth of the single idea, which I love. Beautiful uh, limbo work here. Uh, and interestingly, I was as I was looking for Christmas work or as I was doing searches, I found Limbo. He has another account, Limbo the Second. And look at this, Limbo Gospel Part 1. This is from a year ago for all you limbo collectors out there. Uh, an official cyber propaganda PDF and JNK uh, wrote the, look, written by JNK. So he wrote this thing and then put some limbo works together with it. So anyways, I thought that was just really cool. So they've collaborated before. And I think Junkadelic is associated, or JNK Delic is associated with JNK. So anyways, and you see JNK here. So I guess they've worked together before. Uh, new work by Board Me Social Club, Deal and buy for five still available often board me social clubs work sells out pretty quickly uh I, you know what i really liked about this work or what i liked most let's put it this way is the floor that is not worrying about perspective it kind of reminds me it almost looks backwards where uh further away is bigger and closer is smaller here and that's kind of like backwards perspective and it, to me it was really reminiscent of medieval paintings before they knew perspective, right? Which was, a, I think it was Brunelleschi in the Renaissance, I believe. And so anyways, yeah, like single point perspective and all that. Uh, so here it's kind of reminiscent with the faulty perspective uh, of, of, those, uh, of those early medieval Italian paintings or just medieval paintings in general. Interesting kind of move here too, speaking of irrational elements. So, uh, just with like this floor, which kind of looks like snow covering the wall a little bit. Anyways, a little bit of mayhem here and look, a little bit of mayhem and desperation in the eyes, a little bit of fire and lightning. So anyways, kind of mysterious work here. Uh, Minta, always follow the Tezos star. 
So kind of a Christmas work here from Minta. Let's just expand that. And saluting, and it's almost like the three uh, kings following the star. So kind of a poetic Christmas work from Minta. Following the light, perusing richness. And this I found in uh, Gloomtube's collection. And he's quite interesting to look at his collection. It's fun to look at these really interesting artists and looking at their collection because they find a lot of gems here. Like here's one. Uh, this is by, I think the name is Go, Go, Go. Uh, Go, 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 Twilight Chirp, Dry Technique. So I think it's still all digital. Anyway, it's just an interesting work here. Buy for 370, edition of eight. So something new. A uh, Dexter with an interesting sunset here. A sunset, I really like the title. A sunset paints the sky as if there were no tomorrow. Being alone is fun and sometimes it hurts too, but you can be calm when you're in nature and enjoy its beauty. Spoken like true artists out here. So an object raises our images now to the sky. Uh, so anyway, it's just interesting work by Dexter. Uh, intense sunset, that is for sure. Something that could almost fit in the same show, Dan Control, uh, stones, waiting for the sale of very common stones found on the street while walking between thoughts and sighs, I await the sale. So again, just testing out and pushing the limits of the gradient. And I thought this was a pretty original way of doing it, uh, just with stones. You see, this one looks actually fairly realistic. This one looks fairly realistic. This one is trickier. And that's kind of what it is with Dan Control, is you're kind of just seeing the limits of the uh, gradient tool or just the different ways the gradient tool can be used. Here he just does it straight across. Here he puts more, you know, potentially work into it to make it look more round. Anyway, just always fascinating. And just a simple landscape. Uh, horizon line. Game Boy Advance. Now, I thought he had already put out a Game Boy before, so I never... I was kind of confused by this, actually. Shall we look at the risk of killing the mic here? Beautiful work, though. Edition of 20 sold out. It was only two te Tezos. Game Boy Advance SP. I thought he had another Game Boy, so let me just look. He puts out so much work. It's great. The box. Um, it's probably far back. We're getting closer, though. We're almost there. You see the controller, I think it's gonna be this page. Or maybe, here it is. So Game Boy Advance SP, I guess this one was green. Okay, so I had already sort of seen this before, so that's why, that other one was quite beautiful though. Because in a sense it's, and I love this, you know, irrational uh, gradient at the end here, like this edge at the end. You could argue this is like another crack at it, Probably more successful, we could say. It kind of makes more sense. And I love this, again, the gray, black and white kind of metallic version. Uh, so anyways, all beautiful here. You could put them side by side in a show. Uh, so new work from Dan Control. Rustic Digital Art. This was really interesting too. And he's been playing with the Marios. What is a Mario Brothers anyway? Now, I'm not sure. I don't think we looked at this because we did the Christmas show. And he also put out uh, this work here which has a ton of Mario's in it. So just this experimentation is pretty interesting. And this just looks like a brush mark, but almost like the brush is the eraser here. So, I mean, it all looks kind of easy and kind of weird, but it's quite difficult to be irrational like this. Uh, the brain doesn't want to be irrational. When I'm making art, as, as I think most people, when they're making art, the hardest thing is actually to be irrational because your brain just wants to rationalize everything. And it's almost about, like, I'll trick my brain by using different layers, turning layers off so I can't see what's going on. A lot of my work is about kind of blinding myself to a certain degree to seeing what's, so I can't see what's going on so that it's easier for me to act irrationally or make, let's put it this way, where I continue to act rationally, but through trickery, it, I end up with irrational results. It's not easy. The brain doesn't want to be irrational. It's constantly trying to rationalize everything. The reality principle, Sigmund Freud, that is we rationalize reality. Every, all our input, we turn into a story that makes sense to us. 
That, as far as I understand, is the reality principle, which is contrasted with the pleasure principle, which kind of comes the instincts that comes from the inner. So that's kind of like your a two sided model here, the inner and the outer. Uh, a little bit of Freud here on what we call in Canada and England Boxing Day. Uh, Super Mario number one. So just more, I just happened to find this randomly on Twitter, come across this, and I thought, oh, well, we could just put this side by side with these other Marios. So this looks like a squished Mario, but I can't tell. And here's another one. I can't tell. This is probably the small Mario. So it might just be a direct, uh, you know, pixel tracing. Pixel art started here. May have a point. Interesting. Interesting. I, that's a good question. I never thought of that. I think you could argue, though, now that we're discussing it, if we're going to say it started with Super Mario, well, do you mean the Apple? like Or like going back to 1980, that version of Super Mario Brothers? Because then we might be onto something, but I think you could even say those earlier games, like from the late 70s, even like Atari, you know, which was pre-Super Mario as far as I understand. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think we could, if we're going to say it started here, I think we could say it started at least at Atari. And probably we could start to find other stuff. Anyways, uh, great discussion point here from our anonymous artist here. Food for thought, shall we say. Uh, Edge Q, always have problems pronouncing that name. Edge Q, Feliz Navidad. So playing again with the uh, card, trading card case which I love. To me, it's just a symbol of nostalgia, this kind of keeping it sealed, the symbolism in a sense of that trading card case I love. I've used in previous works. I'll have to show that at some point. Uh, part of the, like early kind of nostalgia studies drawings that I did, I would use that as part of the reference. Uh, so anyways, uh, Feliz Navidad, Jose Feliciano playing with trading cards. Mary Glitchmas from Ellie Lowe. Let's just... Let's just get that going. Let me just... Okay, it should work this time. Trash artist. Uh, pretty hilarious. Anyway, I think we get the picture here. So Ellie Lowe, I, I think that was a free... I really like this trash artist. I think like Ellie Lowe is someone, just someone we keep coming back to. I show almost all their work uh, happily. Here's another work. This is released on the Christmas Eve. Just a, a wild loop. Taking trash art to the next level. And here we have LB and the Side Hustle, a work, uh, just one of their collaborations, where, so again, a GIF that looks like it has video in it. And I guess the LB works are always these kind of glitched out uh, video works on the side. So anyways, cool Christmas work from LB and Side Hustle. Continuing on, Merry Christmas. So remember we were discussing this? This uh, this interior that's kind of three-dimensional. Merry Christmas. Uh, so th this is a clue. So I think this is where it comes from because I'm not a Blender user. I don't really use 3D tools. Uh, 3D Blender. So I think this is where we get this trope from because we see it over and over. So I think it's people that are, you know, you start with a room and this is probably the basic room. So very interesting. So a Christmas theme. Uh, but this is really why I want to show this. It's like, oh, this probably comes from Blender, which is why we see it. Because it's kind of like a trope in digital art, this kind of interior, you know. Uh, okay, reset. Here we go. Glitchtown Arcade with a Nintendo Glitch ROM. And we have a few of these. So with a holiday theme here. And just a cool loop, happy holidays. I thought very nice. Thank you for sending me one, Glitchtown. And uh, yeah, you can get it, I think, for really cheap, for 10 Tezo cents. Happy holidays from Glitchtown. And happy holidays back. And also Sabato. 
the computer will paint for us tonight from Le Mistel Mario Paint 2019 and Holiday Gift Edition. So again, these are some Nintendo glitch ROMs that were uh, sent out. Pretty abstract, isn't it? And again, it sounds like it's playing with Mario Paint. Very abstract here. So there's three in the series. Let's go to the next one. So again, like we're going very abstract here, which is pretty interesting. So let's see where it all goes. So that is the second, and here is the third. Sabato is not afraid to go like pretty abstract here. Yeah, let's just go full screen there. So all very interesting, right? So a little holiday meets Mario Paint, Christmas meets Mario Paint, I think, or maybe just, yeah, part of the holiday drops. Anyways, some Nintendo glitch ROMs. Uh, let's reset this. So Slave Angel, if I pronounce that right, with a bit, with also on the video game theme, which has a bit of a Christmas feeling to it. So here, yeah, very simple joysticks from my youth. That's what we used to use. And then also with some other controllers here and a monitor, very interesting. Uh, more kind of crazy retro. So this came out while I was in Canada there. So, but I didn't want to miss it. And I don't think I've showed it yet. Uh, this was by, uh, what is his name? Spagels Maskinen, of course. Uh, still available for 10 Tezos. I think it's an edition of 100. Uh, really, really awesome classic work by him. Spacemaker 2000B. Yeah, available for 10. And continuing on, let me just reset this. So Shirut, so pretty nice pixel artwork. I discovered this on Joe Rogan's uh, feed or collection. And I thought this was a really nice candle here. So again, pixel artwork, pretty straightforward. And would go great in a Christmas show. I thought this was brilliant though. Also by the same artist, LED candle. And so their solution to doing the LED candle, of course, is making the flame still, and then the things around it move. So just very interesting. And there were four in this series. And if you got all four, you got this work here, which is quite beautiful. So I was thrilled. I bought all four. And then the next day, I ended up with this beautiful work here. So this is a GIF. It's tempting to see this as a MPEG-4, but it is, or an MP4, but it is a GIF. So anyways, really nice Christmas work here. This is by Ed Marola. What is it called? Prey. And this came out on Christmas Day. So kind of a weird piece here. You got a almost has a bit of a satanic kind of vibe to it with the five pointed star and the candles. So just kind of a kind of a wild work with this kind of fog that goes through with the pixelation. And we have another work, or was that here? Yeah, this is what I wanted to contrast actually. Kind of have a similar thing going on with this kind of foggy stuff, like the snow that's done with the depth of field. Again, it was just kind of interesting that they're both playing with that kind of uh, fuzzy pixelation and contrasting that with pixelation. Natural contrast, maybe. Uh, continuing on, Echo, who is also known as Sabato, has a, another glitch ROM work, a very nice kind of pinkish purple work here. Uh, Echo, which is based on a Sega Genesis game. So anyways, it's fun to watch all these uh, glitch ROM pieces and what they do with them. They're quite beautiful. This one especially has a very nice abstract quality to it. Uh, continue on with the pixel art, mech.txe, mech.txt, 10 witnesses. So more beautiful pixel art from mech.txt. And yeah, I mean, look at those colors. And I guess these are the 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I guess the 10 rocks to the witnesses. Beautiful color work here and just beautiful pixel art. Uh, so I think this is going to go for sale today fairly shortly here. Uh, the side hustle with some Christmas sweaters. I picked one of these up. One of ones. And so anyway, a couple of quick Christmas sweaters here for you. 
and another one. I think Ilay picked up the other one. So just fun, fun way of doing Christmas sweaters here. And also, I missed this while we were gone, December 13th, Kareem Safa. And this is called the Wave Scan. So more just interesting pixel artwork. And you see here, yeah, just nice work. Buy for 15, edition of 25. And as we close up here, bite by bit with some more nebulas. So gorgeous colors here. One of ones for 10 Tezos. So for eight bucks, you get these really nice pixel art nebulas. I've picked up a few of these. Uh, also all by bite by bit. Again, using retro tools, PC Paint Maker, PC Paint 3.1. And this seems to be playing with a bit of a sci-fi angle, Space Runner Nebula's Exploration 3501. So this box here, I'm not sure what the reference is or if it's something that Bite by Bit invented, but kind of turns it more into science fiction than just kind of pixelated science photography. Uh, and Space Runner size comparisons. So I'm not sure what this thing is, but it's fun. Look at the sun. Look at that representation of the sun. That is gorgeous over here. Like this, like there's the earth, the blue dot, the pale blue dot, as Carl Sagan said. So anyways, and you see like the awesome uh, interface here, which is art itself, which Byte by Bit recognizes, which is why Byte by Bit includes it. A few other works. So again, this is playing with 1988 Fantavision. Merry Christmas. So pretty simple. And again, showing the UI, leaving the trail and continuing on some banners also by bite by bit. So playing, I think this is Banner Maker, playing with all of the different tools and showing how you can represent Merry Christmas in all the different ways or the holidays uh, in all these different, using all these different tools. Uh, here's Happy Holidays. And again, playing, so you see, again, showing the UI. So these are probably screen recordings. That's probably how he's doing it. And that's why you see, because you probably can't even, it's not like they're gonna have export to MP4. Uh, and I think that's what these are. These are MP4s. No, he's probably doing a screen recording in order to get this part here, I'm assuming. Banner Mania, a couple of uh, interesting trash can. This is by Generation Art. Tez. I thought just a good looking kind of pixelated trash can. An interesting sweater here. Christmas gift by Kane Kanek Zapta, who I think also does some AI art that we've seen before. The rainbows in particular. So kind of a wild artist here. So, and does some nice kind of trash work here. And finally, I was trying to figure out which work this was. If anybody knows the work, please leave the name uh, below. I feel like it's a Bellini, but I couldn't find it. It looks like a four, Quattrocento, it looks like a 1400s, 15th century Italian painting, and it's off the tip of my like eyes. But I'm, I, I looked, I was like, is this a Bellini of some kind, early Bellini? Are those Venetian colors? I was thinking, I couldn't find it. A little Christmas present for my friends and Tezo's top collectors, amen. So beautiful work. Thank you once again for joining me. I hope you're having a great holiday. Until next time, take care.